So hello everyone, hello, welcome to another live stream, to another microscopy live stream. Today is Sunday, usually I have the live streams on a Saturday, but uh, yeah, uh, for organizational reasons I had to, to move the live stream just a second. I have another light here that I wanted to turn on. Okay, here, here we go. Okay, uh, well, first of all, thank you again uh, for joining in uh, today. Um, I've been thinking like every week uh, yeah, quite a bit on what I could talk about. And I decided... Uh, because I received a question again by someone uh, um, and a request that I talk a little bit about phase contrast uh, microscopy. And even though I've uh, been using phase contrast every now and then, also in the live stream and in my videos, I decided, well, maybe I can, I should dedicate maybe um, you know, a whole episode to phase contrast microscopy. Um, sound is good. Thank you very much. Uh, hello around the world again. Um, yeah, I'm glad, uh, just of organizational issues again, I'm glad that you were able to join in again on, on Sunday. Um, yeah, I've, uh, for those of you um, who are new to this, uh, usually on Saturday and then on Sunday, um, mostly on Saturday, occasionally on Sunday, it, I have a live stream like this. Um, if uh, I have to move it from a Saturday to a Sunday, please do check the community posts and then also in the video, in the announcement, um, uh, there's also a countdown timer. Sometimes I have to change it relatively on short notice, uh, just like uh, like uh, today. So uh, what I would like to do first is, uh, in for a couple of minutes, I would like to explain to you what phase contrast microscopy is and then I would like to look at a few slides, also slides that um, I made last week um, because last week I prepared a couple of uh, microscope slides. Um, I kind of transferred slides from old, not old, but from relatively cheap slides, plastic slides, uh, and I properly remounted them. I've got them here um, again and um, yeah, we're just going to look at a few specimens today. Again, if you have any questions um, about anything, please do feel free to ask them as long as they are or microscopy related, I'm quite happy to answer them. Yeah, but please do indicate uh, maybe at Microbe Hunter or at uh, Oliver so that I'm able to be more easily find uh, um, yeah, the comments that are directed to me. Okay. Every now and then I'm, I'm also going to, of course, interrupt my stream a little bit um, to, to answer some of your questions. And if for whatever reason the stream is cancelled, uh, this happened a few months ago, that all of a sudden everything was interrupted and cancelled, um, I will try to restart the stream um, again, but it might uh, take a couple of minutes and uh, it might be under a different link. Just saying. Okay. So hello again around the world. Great, sound seems to work. And what I will do now is, is I would like to give you a little bit of a theoretical um, yeah, overview of, of what phase contrast um, actually is. Okay, so what I have here is our two Olympus phase contrast uh, condensers. Um, they, they, they look uh, similar on the outside, but actually it's quite interesting. This one is very heavy and solid yeah, and, and, and um, quite uh, made of metal. Yeah? This one is plasticky <laughs> and uh, yeah, it also you just hear the sound. It also sounds very a little bit cheaper. <laughs> the interesting thing is is that this uh, this uh, metal one is actually um, significantly older. It's from the older system. This one is actually the more modern one. Uh, both of them are not made anymore because they're from the old Olympus system. And uh, basically, uh, what you need to have is, is if you want to use phase contrast microscopy, I will show you some examples later on. Um, yeah, you need to have a, a not only a phase contrast condenser, but also a matching phase contrast um, uh, objective. And uh, this one is both of them magnified ten times. And uh, you see that there's a pretty big difference, right, between those, right? It says here, PL. A achromatic uh, 10 times PL positive low. PL stands for positive low. And over here, this one over here looks uh, significantly smaller. Okay. Um, and it also says PL10. Let me refocus a little bit, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And uh, these are two different uh, standards. Um, this is a so called a short barrel objective. It's uh, the older system. This is the slightly more modern system, but still not uh, made anymore because Olympus also switched over to. Um, to infinity optics, yeah, and um, if you what you do is, is you, uh, you take out those uh, objectives and look look at it from behind here. Do you actually see that there's this ring in there, right? Yeah, and this is uh, the, the so-called the phase ring. That's uh, very important, uh, and that's basically how you can um, figure out if you've got a phase contrast objective. This is by kind of uh, you, you don't see it from from the other side. Yeah, you have to actually take it out and then you kind of hold it against a bright. Um, um, a, a bright background, and then you're able to see those phase rings. And there's one thing that you notice is, is that they look different. I mean, the diameter and the thickness is different. Yeah? 
And uh, yeah, so this basically means they are not compatible with each other, right? And uh, what is important is, is that uh, for each uh, phase, co uh, phase uh, contrast objective that you have, this is you need to have a proper uh, phase contrast uh, con condenser setting. And uh, we're going to have a look here first at, at this one here on the bottom. Yeah? So this is mounted beneath the microscope. And look here, this is, is the regular bright field iris diaphragm. So that's not phase contrast. Yeah? And then look um, over here. Yeah, it's, it's actually on glass here. You see that there are basically most of the light is blocked out, but there is a, a ring, a bright ring. Yeah. So in here, in the objective, the ring is darker. It's not completely black. It's it's kind of a semi um, a semi transparent, right? Um, and over here, um, it, the filter here or the phase contrast annuli, they completely block out the light. And what you have to do is, is if you're using this objective over here, the ten times objective, you have to rotate this um, all the way that you're able to see ten over here. Right? And then this, the correct one is, is actually, um, yeah, this one over here is, is actually matches to the ring, matches the ring over here. Right? So um, that's, uh, um, and uh, if uh, you use now a, this condenser here with a different uh, objective with a different ring of a different standard, it's not going to work. Yeah, because the size of those rings, they have to be the same. And um, you, what you have over here as well, and now let's m move this up a little bit so that it's easier for you to see a little bit more. Okay, there's another thing that you have to do, is, is, and that is, is you have to actually uh, center the, um, the condenser. And there is a possibility of doing that by, by moving this yeah, like this. And there's also one over here. You can loosen it, then you're able to, to move it. And uh, by, by uh, pushing this lever, yeah, it's, uh, it's almost not, not visible, yeah? uh, but you are actually... Uh, you're actually um, uh, moving uh, and shifting around the condenser because the idea is is that you're lining it up. I don't know if you're able to see that. If you move this, yeah, do you actually see this one is kind of moving back and forth? Okay, and one axis and then over here, yeah. Up. I have to hold this. Yeah, this is another axis. Yeah, it's left. I think it's left, right, or so, right? But over here, you're able to see this much better, right? Um, so this is basically something where you have to um, center it in such a way that the ring of the objective over here and the ring of the condenser, they, they kind of line up. And then when you do that, um, then you're able to get phase contrast, uh, the phase contrast effect, okay? So uh, what I would like to do now is, is I'm going to interrupt myself again, um, and I'm going to... Um, and answer some of the questions here. So there is a hello from all over the world. Yeah, I'm not going to go say hello to all of you individually, but uh, yeah. So, um, so um, the thing is the following. Marcel is asking, can you use phase contrast with stained specimens? The short answer is yes. I'm going to show you. However, um, it might not always look very nice, okay? Because a phase contrast microscopy changes the brightness of some parts of the specimen. And so what you have is you have an overlap of the stains of the specimen um, with uh, the change in brightness uh, of phase contrast. I think what I have to do is I actually have to, um, uh, to give you then an example a little bit of what, what I actually mean. Huh? So it is possible, but the colors will change. What does the PL10 stand for? Over here, PL does not stand for plant, but positive low. PL is positive low and pH is positive high. And this uh, basically determines uh, whether the specimens like bacteria, for example, whether they should appear darker on a bright background or vice versa. Okay, um, I think I did not explain yet the purpose of, of phase contrast microscopy. I just realized, I just started to talk, but the, the idea of phase contrast is, is that, uh, um, let's say in the case of bacteria, and I'm going to uh, show you a couple of my cheek cells as well, is, is uh, that um, some specimens are very transparent. And uh, if you want to stain them, then there is the problem that the staining process will actually kill the, the organisms. Yeah, that's, that's normal because uh, during the staining process, you have to prepare this, uh, the specimen and so on. And this kills off the, the cells and then you're not able 
to observe living processes. We are not able to yeah, observe the processes of life. Um, so that's a little bit of a problem. You have a dilemma. On one hand, you need to stay in it. Uh, but on the other hand, if you do, you're kind of killing the cells. And sometimes you don't want to do that, right? And um, for this reason, um, it, uh, phase contrast is uh, a method of, of actually converting um, differences in refractive index um, into uh, differences in brightness. So for example, if you take a glass ball, a marble, let's say, okay, a glass ball, a marble, and if you take this glass ball and if you put it uh, into um, a, a glass of water or a glass of, of vegetable oil, then it will disappear, it will appear to disappear, right? Uh, because, um, yeah, it has the same refractive index. Uh, um, and, uh, or, yeah, and uh, however, what it is able to do is if there's a difference, uh, even a slight difference in refractive index, then the optics are able to convert this into a difference in brightness. Um, a Dutch uh, physicist, uh, Fritz Zernicke, he received the Nobel Prize um, for having um, developed the phase contrast macroscopy back in the days. I think it was in the 1950s. Yeah. So, um, so the PL10 stands for a positive low, PH would stand for positive high. Okay. For the DIC implementation, did you take apart your turret to put in the prism in place? For the DIC implementation, did you take a... So I think uh, what you are referring to, my, this is because I, my microscope that you see over here on, on top, right? This is a DIC, differential interference contrast. Um, however, I have one phase contrast objective mounted as well, which I'm going to use. And this one actually here is not from the microscope above, but it's from a separate microscope that I have. Okay, So I bought those parts secondhand over eBay, and I upgraded one of my other um, um, uh, two Olympus microscopes to phase contrast. Um, so... Um, so this is basically the, the, the thing. Yeah? Um, so I'm going to, I see that you have upgraded your audio setup, new microphone, yes, okay. Um, yeah, this is indeed uh, a, a new microphone that I um, bought a, a couple of weeks ago because it is a little bit less large. The other one that I had was, was quite, uh, quite large and uh, yeah, was kind of taking away a little bit too much of my face and, and everything. Yeah. So, do you need a special microscope for, um, for the phase contrast condenser or can you attach one to a normal microscope as well? If uh, you, and I receive this question quite a lot. If you want to upgrade your microscope to phase contrast, um, it, now what I'm going to say might sound a little bit weird. Maybe you don't want to upgrade it, but if you actually consider um, yeah, going phase contrast, maybe it would be better to actually buy a microscope that already has everything in place for phase contrast. The reason why I'm saying this is, is because um, if you just have this here, it does not mean that you're able to connect it to any other microscope, right? It might not fit. Yeah. So um, you cannot just automatically assume that every microscope is upgradable and that um, you have phase contrast condensers and ob um, objectives for every microscope. Yeah. The objectives should not be such a big problem because uh, they're in, at least in this system over here, in the 160 millimeter system, um, that it's written here, DIN 160, that's a standard, right? And um, many microscopes are able to accept those, so that's not the issue. Um, but actually phase contrast condensers um, might be a little bit, uh, you might not be able to be able to connect them to all microscopes. So you've got to check uh, out, you've got to check this first. And uh, sometimes it might be, you might be better off simply buying a new microscope. I know it sounds crazy if I say that, um, but um, I would actually um, yeah, think about this as well. Um, uh, PL mean that the positive low, um, I think this depends a little bit of uh, whether the, how the refractive PL means that the specimen, in this case, the bacteria, will appear darker um, on a brighter background. And I think this depends uh, not on the specimen itself, but uh, the refractive index in relation to the, um, to sur to the surrounding. Um, yeah. So that's uh, basically one thing. Uh, just another optics that I want to show you over here. This is a so-called a phase telescope. And uh, what you do is, is you take out your eyepiece, you insert this one over here, you can turn this to focus. And then if you do that, then you're able to see both the ring of this um, yeah, of the um, condenser um, and the ring of uh, the objective, and then you're able to align it much more easily. Yeah, and you're able to center it. Um, because I cannot demonstrate this now um, here um, on my system um, in my other YouTube channel, Microbunter Microscopy, similar name. Um, I'm currently working on a separate video where I actually show you um, how this is aligned because some people have had some technical issues. Uh, concerning this okay so so much uh, to the theory 
Um, and what I would like to do now is, is I would like to simply make a couple of uh, specimens and simply show you in comparison how um, phase contrast looks like um, yeah, under the microscope. I only have one phase contrast uh, objective connected. It's a 40 times objective, but um, it's going to be enough for our purposes. Okay. And uh, the purpose of why I uh, also decided to do this video today is, is also to illustrate a little bit that phase contrast is not the best is not, underline the not, is not the best uh, technique for some specimens. As a matter of fact, some specimens, there is not a big difference, um, and sometimes you just don't, it looks worse, okay? So this is some, something I just want to show uh, and say. So we're going to start off with um, a commercial slide. Um, it is uh, a pollen, pine pollen, whole mount, and it is a stained slide. And this is one of the examples where, um, yeah, which kind of answers a little bit the question, um, does... Um, phase contrast um, work with stained specimens, okay? Um, so I would like to show this uh, to you. Um, so let's put this in here first, okay? Uh, yeah, the reason why it looks dark is, is so I have to find it first. Um, and uh, where is the pollen? Here it is, okay? I'm just gonna use my four times objective simply to, to line everything up, okay? And uh, I'm going to, and yeah, important, um, you can use phase contrast objectives also for regular bright field. This is possible. Um, how do you do that? Well, simply by, by switching the phase contrast condenser over to bright field. Yeah? The, the ring in the objective is going to degrade the image quality a tiny bit. Um, not a lot. Um, yeah, you, you have to do a side-by-side -side comparison, right? Um, but you can use phase contrast objectives for regular bright field, but not the other way around. Okay, so it's quite easy. What I do is, is I'm, I'm going to uh, move in the phase contrast objective, okay? And uh, this is now uh, basically, I just a second, I remove the DIC prism, okay? And this is now how it would look like in its regular bright field. And you see that the pollen grains are essentially, you can open and close the condenser, of course, and you see that the pollen grains um, essentially uh, look stained. I don't know what stain they used. Looks a little bit like saffronin, that would be the red one, maybe also methylene blue, which is uh, actually blue, but maybe over here it's uh, green because it, it's able to change its color depending on pH a little bit, right? So um, this is now bright field using a phase contrast objective, which uh, basically is now used for bright field. And look what happens if I now switch over, um, up, I switch over now and I, uh, I insert now the yeah, phase contrast. Now I have to open the condenser. I go up with the brightness and this is how it looks like. It looks a little bit messier, okay? Um, however, um, and I'm going to now turn on the arrow to illustrate a few things, okay? I have to turn on the, here we go. You do notice now that the background looks a little bit darker. Okay, that's normal. And you see that uh, over here that many of those pollen grains, yeah, um, if you uh, refocus, they have a, a slight bright border around them. And that is very typical for phase contrast. There are other specimens where you see that much more. Okay, yeah. Now, but um, if you look into the pollen grains, you're able to see more details in there. Right, um, and uh, yeah, again, this is not this is a, a, a commercially prepared slide. So normally you would use phase contrast actually for living specimens. So I'm going to just show you as well, right? But uh, this is simply to illustrate a little bit of how um, the overlap of phase contrast together with uh, um, with uh, um, uh, with a, sta a stained specimen, right? So again, switching back here, you yeah, you know, see, I have to go down with the light intensity here. Yeah, and this is regular bright field again. Um, when you're using phase contrast, like here, um, you, have to, you have to open the condenser all the way. And if you close the condenser now, okay, then this is going to happen. It's going to go completely dark. Yeah? It's going to block all of the light. Right? So for phase contrast, uh, you do not uh, use uh, the aperture diaphragm of the condenser to control depth of field and contrast. Yeah? So just to, to illustrate this. So um, I go through here. Um, and I'm going to ask a few more. I'm going to uh, have a look at a few more questions. For DIC upgrade, I had to take apart the turret in my setup to put in the prism with one of the empty slots. Um, it was the reason why I asked for the previous question. I got it. Okay. So, um, something that is, um, it, it's, uh, um, uh, this depends very much on the microscope. Um, 
generally there are condensers around. Let me quickly go over here, like this one over here that already have everything uh, built in. In this case, uh, all of the phase contrast, um, yeah, over here, for example, looks, looks like this. This is dark field. Yeah, that's bright field, and they are for 10 times and 40 times, right? And, and they're kind of fixed. Yeah. However, there are condensers out there which are general purpose, which you can take apart, and then you just put in a, an appropriate disk. Yeah. And for DIC, for differential interference contrast, you need to put in not a filter like this, but special prisms that each a special prism for each objective that you use. Right. Um, and in this case, uh, you have to take apart the condenser. But if I take this apart, I cannot exchange anything here. Right. So this is a little bit of the thing. For example, the system that I have up there, I had to take the condenser apart um, and I had to insert in a, yeah, a phase contrast filter, phase contrast annulus, as it's called, just for this objective that you're, use, that you're seeing up here right now. Uh, and, and for the others, I have got uh, prisms. Yeah, so that's uh, the thing. Yeah? So I kind of had to, to match the, I had to match the condenser to, uh, with, uh, with the objectives. Yeah? Uh, next question, one day you can explain DIC and dark field and curly illumination too, it would be interesting. Oh good, thank you very much, um, I can do that. Um, actually I was thinking about next week, I'm not sure if I'm able to manage, but I was actually thinking uh, to first talk a little bit about oblique illumination. Okay. Can you use it in dark field? Yes, and I want to show this to you as well, maybe not the best uh, um, example, but look. Okay, this is now uh, the, uh, the, the four times uh, objective and uh, if you see this would be dark field but um, you see the it's not a it's not the best specimen for that the reason being uh, a little bit like this yeah this is now actually dark field but the problem is is that the that the the pollen grains that you see here really do not um, the pollen grains that you see here really do not um, uh, reflect the light properly so it is sometimes possible maybe I'll find a better specimen later it is sometimes possible to use those phase contrast uh, uh, filters here also as a dark field not not this one this is actually a dark field this one as a dark field filter okay but you see um, yeah you see mostly the dust in the background not ideal not ideal okay so um, let's move on um, just very quickly, a second uh, specimen over here that I would like to show you. This is now, oh, I dumped my finger now into the yeast. Um, frog blood. Okay, let's uh, go bright field first. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, I have to kind of find it. Here it is. So. Uh, it's of course also a stained specimen, frog blood or the blood of amphibians, they have a nucleus. That's why you see in each one of the red blood cells you see this dark oval nucleus, right? That's now in bright field and pop, this is now, I have to open the condenser again. Um, oh, I turned off the light accidentally. Okay, so this here would be now again in phase contrast. Okay, you see that the it looks a little bit messed here because now there are lots of structures, um, all the dust and, and other structures now visible that were not uh, visible before. Okay, um, and um, also uh, the cell inside the nucleus also becomes darker and uh, a little bit. So you see that um, here too. Um, yeah, phase contrast changes um, uh, the appearance a little bit. You might, some of you might say, well, yeah, it's all very good and very nice, but actually, honestly, really, is it really worth so much more money for phase contrast? I mean, yeah, sure, there are some differences, but it's not that great, right? Yeah, um, the difference, is it really worth it? I'm gonna show you then a specimen where it really makes a difference, okay, which are my, my cheek cells. Um, this should kind of illustrate that phase contrast is not automatically better, um, but it really depends a lot, as so often, a, a lot on the, uh, on the actual specimen that you observe. Yeah? So this is a little bit the thing. So um, yeah, these are the um, frog red blood cells, and now we've got some human red blood cells here. Uh, yeah, you probably already have seen those anyway. Um, again, a, this is a permanent mounted uh, slide. Yeah, uh, this is how they look like over here. Okay, um, yeah, those uh, human red blood cells. They look like a little donuts, um, but look how bright they are in the center, and they have a very dark edge. Yeah, and uh, now let's go over again into bright field. Go down with the light intensity, and this is kind of the 
the normal appearance. Okay. By the way, just um, uh, I, I know, uh, it looks like they are stained as well. Just want to show you something. Um, this year, where's the arrow? Uh, this year is a white blood cell. And the dark thing that you see in there, these are the, it's the stained nucleus. Some white blood cells, they have a lobed nucleus, which you're able to see quite, quite well over here in the stain. That's why you stain the blood so that you're able to see it. And if here, if we go like this, yeah, um, then, yeah the blood will look different and you are able to see again slightly different structures okay so this is um, um uh, yeah basically a little thing here do you prefer face contrast or dic are the purposes so different and i would say um the idea of all of these uh, techniques is, is is to make structures visible um, as well as possible, right? Um, and uh, I would say that, uh, as I mentioned before, different specimens have can be viewed better under different techniques, right? Um, most microscopes, almost all mi microscopes have bright field. Bright field is very good if you want to observe the natural colors yeah, of a specimen. Yeah? Um, so the, this is basically, uh, or if you want to stain something and you would like to see how does it stain, right? Um, so you cannot say automatically that the other techniques are better or yeah, they're just different and uh, they're simply suitable for different things. I will tell you a little bit the following. Um, when I started off with the face contrast, when I bought myself those um, those uh, yeah, condensers and, and, and the optics and so on, a couple of years ago, second hand, to upgrade my microscope, I was kind of hoping, wow, this is going to be uh, open and a completely new world. And then I discovered that, especially for water samples, where you, which are sometimes where the specimens are sometimes a little bit thicker, it didn't look good. It really, because the water samples with algae, you want to see the green color, right? And, and then all of a sudden, it kind of looked, everything looked much more grayish, right? Um, so uh, you were, however, you were still able to see details that you were not able to see, but it simply didn't look as nice. Right, um, but sometimes if you're doing this for fun, a hobby microscopy, you want to get nice pictures. We also want to see some nice colors as well, right? So you see, um, it, it's it, it's a trade-off, okay? Um, interesting specimen looks like it was stained with methylene blue and con uh, and counterstained with iodine. Why? What do you think? I don't know which one you're talking about. It could be, yeah. These are very standard. Uh, methylene blue is a standard stain, and eosine very standard. Yeah. Are platelets visible too? Possibly, um, um, but they're difficult. They're, they're kind of small. Yeah. So, so, may, so I don't know if some of the things that you see in the background here, some of them might be some platelets, okay, or whether it's some kind of a, some debris or some impurities. Yeah. So that's a little bit the thing. Huh? Um, I guess frog's blood vessels are bigger. That's why frog blood cells have nuclei. I guess the blood cells are still eukaryotic, right? Of course they're eukaryotic, okay? Uh, yeah, they have organelles. The nucleus is, is the main organelle. Huh? Um, I don't know if you can actually conclude uh, um, about the size of the blood vessels because they, of course, also change um, the finer they become, right? Uh, but uh, still, frogs maybe have a different... Uh, or amphibians, maybe they do not have such a high oxygen consumption, therefore their uh, red blood cells are fine with a nucleus. Um, in mammals, like in humans, um, everything is used to carry oxygen. Yeah, And so this could be... A, it's, yeah, a guess. Yeah. So the frog red blood cells had a nucleus, but not the human ones. That's correct. Yes. Amphibians like frogs, they have a nucleus. Human red blood cells have lost the nucleus during uh, formation uh, because the space is needed uh, for hemoglobin to carry oxygen. Um, yes, platelets will be visible if they're stained properly. What's your stream schedule? Usually uh, on Saturdays... Uh, at uh, 2130 Central European time. I think it's uh, 2030 UTC. Yeah. So usually I'm doing this on a Saturday at, at, uh, um, at this time. Um, but um, for personal reasons, I had to move it from yesterday to today. Okay. Uh, okay. So that is, um, so that's kind of a little bit something I just wanted to show you. And question, are you German? Yeah. Well, um, I speak German, okay, but I'm from Austria in Europe, but I do speak German, obviously. So, herzliche Grüße, auch nach Deutschland und in die Schweiz. Basically, I just had said, said greetings also to Germany and to Switzerland. Um, and uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do now is the following. I'm going to show you now one of those nice specimens that are really are nice when you um, look at them, or not nice, but 
where you see a lot of more details in phase contrast, okay? And I just realized that I, my, I did not wash my hands, so just a second. You can actually do this, of course, also with your, I don't know, little finger, scratch some epithelial cells, but it's kind of huh, dirty. So what I'm gonna do now is the following. This is now um, a classic um, for, um, this is a classic now for uh, a very nice specimen for face contrast. You take something like this or your little finger and you collect some cells. Okay, plenty of cells on here. Uh, I think I should switch now over to the desk view again. Okay, so and you basically transfer the cells on a microscope slide. You, ca you can essentially yeah, break them apart a little bit because there are many cell clusters here. Okay, um, so that's it. Um, I put this into the trash can. I just realized I do not have a container for I'm super well prepared today. I do not have a container for my uh, for water. Oh, look what I oh look. <laughs> this will do. Yeah, sometimes flat a flat dish is better than a, a, a beaker or, or a glass because uh, otherwise it's gonna tip over. Yeah. So and then what you do as always, you add a little bit of water directly on here. Um, phase contrast works best if the layer is very thin. Okay, so um, don't uh, don't add too much. And I need a cover glass. Let's, let's use this here. Um, and um, yeah, we need to wipe it a little bit. The, the problem with many of those slides and not, not these, not this brand of slides, um, because they are really clean, um, but uh, sometimes, yeah. So, oh, okay. If you have uh, yeah, some some water here on the side, what I usually do is, is some tissue paper or whatever. It just, I don't like uh, floating, um, yeah, cover glasses. Okay, do I have? Yeah, I don't even have tissue paper here. Super great. Okay, okay. Let's uh, remove some more. So, and let's hope that we're able, I'm, I'm actually almost certain, let's hope that we're able to find uh, some cells. And I'm going to show you how this looks like in Brightfield first. Okay. Um, we can also compare it with DIC. And because it's not stained, this is gonna be now a challenge, okay? Uh, but that's the whole point to kind of illustrate a little bit that um, it's not so easy always. So you have to close the condenser all the way. This is some uh, some bubbles are here. Okay, um, yeah. <laughs> so this is a four times uh, magnifying objective, and look, you see those things here in the background. Not those dark things here, yeah, but those bright things here. These are individual uh, cells from my mouth. You see, it? it's difficult to see. Okay, so let's go up a little bit with the magnification. So bright field, okay? This is a regular bright field. Yeah, and here are the cells. Not those dark things that you see, but this here, for example, this here, this here. And I think it's kind of clear that this is pretty difficult to see. I have to close the condenser all the way uh, to increase the contrast. Yeah. And uh, yeah, here, here are some more. Yeah. These are all cells, but uh, as expected, of course, yeah, too difficult to see. Okay, let's go up with the, let's go up again with the, uh, yeah, intensity. It's again still bright field. I'm going to give you then a, a short demonstration of also how DIC looks like, but we are able to see already a little bit. Look, there's a nucleus in here, there's a nucleus in here, there's a nucleus maybe over here somewhere, right? Those round things inside the cells. But this is not satisfying. 
right? So what you normally do is you do, you do some staining, right? And, and that's going to be fine, but then you are essentially killing off the cells. Not a real problem here because, I mean, come on, uh, yeah. And over here, again, this is now the 40 times um, objective, yeah? Um, in Brightfield, and what I'm going to do now is, is I'm not going to use this 40 time objective. I'm going to use my phase contrast 40 times objective. And look, it looks the same. Why does it look the same? Because I did not engage the phase contrast uh, condenser annulus. Yeah, so this is just using my phase contrast uh, um, objective yeah, with, uh, without phase contrast. So, and what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to open the condenser. It's going to be too bright. And I'm going to now engage phase contrast. And this is how it looks like. Okay. And all of a sudden, we're able to see um, quite a few more details. Yeah. Especially also um, the nuclei that we have here. Right. Yeah, so, um, and um, again, the typical characteristic look that this is bright fringe, uh, sometimes around the, the specimen. Yeah. So this is the, the, yeah, yeah. You see over here, there's still some clusters of cells. Yeah. So again, for comparison, this is now bright field. Oh, I unfortunately bumped against the, uh huh. Yeah. So this is. I'm going to close the condenser now to increase the contrast. This here is now bright field. Very difficult to see. And here, I make it brighter again. And I open the condenser, and that's face contrast. Face contrast. Bright field. Face contrast. Okay. Yeah, I, you you have uh, yeah, uh, see a big difference here. Broken cells. Um, well, let's put it this way: it is uh, these cells are shed off from the inside of my mouth, um, and uh, yeah, normal. This happens all the time. And uh, what we do normally, we just swallow them and then they're digested. Yeah. So this uh, yeah, I, qu I quickly go through the the comments again. Yeah, uh, floating cover glasses are really annoying. Yeah. Yeah, dark field would look nice. Um, the thing is the following, um, and that is again uh, um, a little bit of a problem that I have is I cannot uh, do dark field on my uh, currently because I do not have a dark field. I don't have a dark field uh, a patch stop installed in my condenser that I have right now. Right. So, but maybe you would be interested in now that we've looked at phase contrast and and, and bright field. Um, maybe you would also like to know how does this actually look like uh, now um, concern in in DIC. Okay, so let's add a little bit of color. Okay, so I'm going to switch over, um, over to my, yeah, um, I'm going to engage DIC now. And I have to switch over here. I'm going to close this here. And we see it a little bit better already, but the nice thing about DIC is that you can do this color play. But let's go up 20 times. I always have to change uh, the appropriate DIC um, prism as well. And 40 times. And this is how it looks like in, I, have to, I can open it a little bit in DIC, in differential interference contrast. You see, uh, it gives you a little bit like the appearance that you have, it has a three-dimensional shape, um, but still the contrast is not quite as high as in phase contrast. Yeah. So this is a little bit, uh, yeah, um, yeah. again, you, you see it depends uh, quite a bit on, on what you want to observe, right? Um, yeah, but uh, this here is now in DIC, but the reason why I often use DIC is because you can do those fun things like changing the color around and, and, and so on, yeah? And, yeah. and the typical thing here again is, is, is that it uh, uh, gives you a somewhat of a, almost a three-dimensional appearance, yeah? Um, so um, DIC gives you a variable of Reinberg. Yes, what I would like um, to say is that DIC is a little bit, it appears to be similar to so-called oblique illumination, which I would like to do in one of my upcoming live streams. I would like to have to change my microscope around in order to do that. So I'll gr uh, grab a microscope from the cellar and, and, and get it connected as well so that I can uh, uh, do that a little bit. Yeah. So this is kind of the, 
yeah, if, yeah, at 60 times as well. Yeah, so that's we can go up even higher, and yeah. So, yeah. so this kind of how it looks like. Yeah. So um, yeah, let's go back again to phase contrast because that's actually the the point of this whole live stream today. Okay, and I have to open it again and. I have to boop, do it like this, and then here we're back at at, at phase contrast. Okay, so um, there's another thing that I would like to show you. And uh, if you look, um, it's difficult to see here, but if you look, um, and I don't know, there's lots of debris here, but uh, um, if you look, for example, at, at those tiny dots over here, some of them are a little bit longer than not dots, most likely bacteria. Um, and uh, not those fuzzy structures, but some of them, the darker dots that you see here are indeed bacteria. Could be something else as well, like, I don't know, some, some other fragments of, <laughs> yeah, as well. But um, bacteria um, will appear to be um, uh, dark on a bright background. Yeah? And uh, for this reason, phase con ah, this is typical, ah, that's nice, that's a bacterium over here, a rod-shaped bacterium, okay? This one over here is a rod-shaped bacterium. How do I know? Simply by the shape and by the darkness and the fact that it's uh, fair, uh, quite well defined. And you see it uh, quite nicely dark on a brighter background. Okay. Now let's see how this looks like in bright field. I close it, the condenser. I go down a little bit with the intensity. And are we able to see it? No, I'm barely able to see it. Yeah. And this is uh, this demonstration actually shows a very important concept. Many people think that if you want to see bacteria, all you need is a high magnification, right? Um, I've got I've a, the condenser is max uh, fully closed now, right? So maximum contrast. Uh, but still, because bacteria are so transparent, um, you're still not able to see them. It doesn't matter if you make it larger, ma make them larger or not, because they're too transparent, difficult to see, right? And again, I engage phase contrast, I open the condenser to give it more light, huh? and, and here we are again. Uh -huh. So this basically means if, a bacteria, for whatever reason, bacteria are um, the things that you're interested in, and if you do not want to stain them, then, uh, ba um, yeah, you, basically, if you want to do quick bacterial counts, for example, and so on, then phase contrast is the way uh, way to go. Hmm? So, again, a couple of questions, and I would like to show you some water samples and some yeast cells. And then later on, I also would like to show you some of the slides that I mounted last week. Yeah, um, yeah. are there any bacteria to see in your lab? Um, currently, well the ones that I got from my mouth right now, but currently I'm not growing any bacteria. Um, um, you, uh, because, strictly speaking, there are you got to be a little bit careful. Um, I highly disadvise growing unknown bacteria. However, it is possible to grow, for example, yogurt bacteria and other safe bacteria. That's not a problem. Yeah, But you should not be growing any on petri dishes, any unknown bacteria. Strictly speaking, you're already at an elevated uh, biohazard level. Yeah, and strictly speaking, if you grow or cultivate unknown bacteria, you, ha um, you have to actually need a license for that. Yeah? So again here, uh, it's, it's bent rod-shaped bacterium, yeah? which is not visible if you just observe it in bright field. Yeah? Um, how much or how little in terms of resolution is lost when using a phase contrast in bright field because the phase ring in the objective? That's a good question. Okay. Um, so the, the thing is the following. Um, and there is an answer to this in my other channel, Microbe Hunter Microscopy. If you search through the videos, I made a couple of months ago, a couple of years ago, a video where I directly compare a phase contrast and a non-phase contrast microscope uh, objective. Okay. If you check my other channel, I made a direct comparison of the same objective. Only one of them had a phase ring, the other one didn't. And yes, there is a slight quality loss. Um, if with a phase ring, yeah, because this kind of also causes a little bit of blurriness, but not much. Um, so for all practical purposes, you can ignore it. Um, and uh, yeah, but there is, if you do a side-by-side -side comparison, there is 
a small loss of um, uh, of image quality and the reason is, is if you are interested in physics is, is because of the phase ring there is some diffraction going on and the light rays at every corner of the light rays are kind of bending and then there's interference and this lowers the contrast yeah so uh, the answer is, is yes there is a little bit of a, a, a an image loss a little bit a tiny amount of brightness loss but you can forget about that because it can be easily compensated over the microscope light Okay, so I never thought that bacteria are actually transparent or something in diagrams. They usually have a color or something. Well, the interesting thing is, is that many bacteria indeed do have a color. They are pigmented, some of them. Uh, but you do not see the color unless they're growing in a colony, right? So that, that's the thing. It's a little bit like, yeah, like the red blood cells. If you take a, a blood looks red, but under the microscope, it looks transparent. You do not see so much of the color. The same with bacteria. Even the, some of them might be pigmented, might carry a color, but because they're so small and so thin, um, it, the color doesn't uh, come into effect. Okay. Do you need a software graphical user interface uh, with your camera to show the image on the screen? If so, does the color between the eyepiece and the screen look the same with the SC application? So first of all, what you see over here, other direction, what you see over here um, on the side and what I see uh, through the microscope is exactly the same. Okay, um, so I'm just capturing the, the video from the camera and I'm feeding it into the program. The program is called OBS Studio, which is a free program that you can download and where I'm able to combine different cameras, like, like the camera upstairs, up there, then my, my face, right? I have a green screen to remove the background. That's why you see the blue background and then also the, 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 the image on the side. And then I put a graphic, uh, uh, yeah, an arrow on top yeah, that I can turn on and off. Yeah. So this is kind of the, the program is able to combine that. But generally what you see is also that what I see. Same color um, and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, why are these bacteria not moving at all? No Brownian motion either? Yes, um, that's, a, that's a good one. Um, many bacteria, um, if you take a lot of bacteria and you look at them under the microscope, some of the bacteria will move on their own. They wiggle around and it's clearly they have a certain directional movement. They move on their own. Some bacteria, because they have a flagellum, or, yeah, and they kind of move that and they kind of look, use this like a propeller and they move around, right? And other bacteria that float around um, will wiggle around because of Brownian motion. And this one over here stays put. And the reason is, is um, it can be two reasons. First of all, maybe the, 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 the liquid is so thin that um, essentially it um, does not allow much movement not so much the case. More likely is, is that many bacteria will sometimes stick to the glass surface, either the cover glass or the microscope slide. They will stick to it and they will not move. And if you refocus a little bit, then sometimes you will see particles or bacteria that will actually move. Um, so sometimes it's actually easier if they stick um, to the glass surface because then it's easier for, uh, for me to focus and then they're all in one plane. Yeah, but well observed. Uh, yeah, indeed, normally they move around, but and sometimes if there is, uh, yeah, if they're limited in the movement or sometimes they, they simply adhere to the glass. Yeah? Your blue jeans also have the same color effect. Most of the fibers are white, uh, but there is enough blue threads that your eye sees a lot of blue collectively. Yes. Okay. So let's, let's, let's uh, move on a little bit. Um, I would like to show you now some, some yeast cells that are prepared um, a little bit. Up. And um, what I shall do, what time is it? I always double check a little bit the time, around 50 minutes already. Um, and um, yeah, I've also made some, yeah, yeah, I added a little bit of dry yeast, a little bit of sugar, right, and, and very small amount, I just put it over here, up, oh, you cannot see it, uh, here, very small amount, because here too, I want to limit the movement a little bit, but if you take more of this liquid, you can actually see the Brownian motion of the yeast cells, yeah, and, uh, there is not much uh, respiration going on, but in the video that I made, um, I actually uh, you can actually see the carbon dioxide bubbles. Huh? So let's have a look here again. Also, uh, bright field and uh, and phase contrast. This one is now. Let's switch over to bright field. Okay, I also have to change the. Let me. F I have to change now the the, 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 the camera. Here we go. Uh, I have to close it. Ah, yeah. He, he, lots of yeast cells. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's move somewhere where there are. Yeah. They're moving because uh, the, the liquid is still spreading beneath the, um, the cover glass. Yeah? So maybe I can find a place here, see the bubbles, and you get that. Um, yeah. Hmm. 
uh, let me find a place where there are yeah there's, it's slowly spreading so the the layer might become thinner and thinner and thinner yeah because it, okay that's bright field now okay um I don't know. This I, I still use too much here, but over here the the cells are more individual. Ah, here here it's better. See the density is not quite as high. Okay, so this is now basically yeah uh, with the condenser um, fully closed and a bright field, and you see the yeast cells forty times magnified, and now phase contrast. I have to open it again here. Okay. And this is how it looks like. And yeah, because of the high density, it's again difficult to see. But yeah, maybe I should redo the specimen. But again, here you see the contrast is higher. It doesn't appear higher because they're so densely packed. But each cell again is, is darker and surrounded by a brighter ring. Not, not brighter ring, a brighter halo, really. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this uh, away again. And I'm going to try try to do this differently yeah. maybe I'm just gonna look I'm going to just try to spread it a little bit more so let's give it a try so scope yes this is better see okay very typical for phase contrast yeah, you see that the cells are brighter in this case on a darker background, the bacteria are darker on a brighter background. I guess this depends very much of whether the refractive index um, of the cell of the specimen is higher or lower than the surrounding medium. Yeah. So this is a little bit the thing. So again, this is phase contrast. This is, we close the condenser, this is bright field. Okay, and uh, because it's so fun, let's do the following. Let's switch over to now. I need to do this here. And this one over here is now DIC again. Okay. And again, you see that the cells do look a little bit more three dimensional. And now, because it's DIC, I can go up to 60 times. You see how dark it becomes. It really takes away a lot of light. I have to open the. Yeah. And now you are able to actually see that some of the cells are compressed between the cover glass and the microscope slide. A few cells are able to move. And if we were to zoom in even more, you would actually see the Brownian motion here. Yeah. So let me quickly go through some questions again. Um, for my understanding, this technique better. Can you state that phase contrast microscopy is capable of converting a difference in refractive index into a difference in brightness? Yes, this is exactly correct, and this is the point. Um, essentially, what happens is the following, and uh, it, the, the, the physics is, is advanced, okay? But what happens is, is that um, as the light go passes, uh, the light from the lamp uh, passes uh, uh, through the the specimen and uh, because the specimen has a different refractive index than the surrounding water therefore the wavelengths are compressed together a little bit okay and then when it exits then those uh, the, the waves are phase shifted that's why it's called phase contrast because then the wave um, are not the same anymore uh, but essentially are phase shifted and this can and then the way the light that comes out of the specimen interferes now with the light that uh, did not go through the specimen um, and then uh, they kind of cancel each other out and then it makes it darker okay this is uh, yeah very uh, quickly explained yeah? but it is correct differences in 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 differences in um, in uh, refractive index are converted into differences in brightness and we humans are not our human eye is not able to do that okay um, so yeah so in other words, in microscopy, what you have is, if you want to get a little more technical about it, you have two different types of specimens. You have so-called amplitude specimens and you have so-called phase specimens. Phase specimens generally, um, or let's put it this way, an ideal phase contrast specimen is not stained, 
has no color on its own, um, but has a different, uh, a largely different refractive index than the surrounding water. And then essentially do not have any natural colors of the specimen or stains interfering with, with the phase contrast. Otherwise you have an overlap of the color of the specimen with a phase contrast effect. Um, so that ideally a good phase specimen would be, a, would be very transparent, would have no color on its own, so bacteria are very good in that respect. Yeah? And then you have so-called amplitude specimens, and amplitude specimens, they will um, basically reduce the brightness of the object. Yeah? So these are kind of the two things. Most specimens are somewhere uh, have a combination of both. So I think this was a little bit technical. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, at Microbe Hunter, I see OBS is good for, li for live stream. Thanks for the tip. My camera requires specific software. I periodically run into the discrepancy for sample coloration. It requires turning in, in a G GUI. What you can do is the following. In OBS Studio, it is also possible to capture a screen or a window. So what you can do theoretically is, is you can, um, uh, if you need to do any color correction over a specific software, camera software, you can do that. You project it on the screen and then in OBS, you just capture that window and import it, so to say, live. Yeah. So, um, do they make an oil immersion 100 times phase contrast objective? Oh, of course, of course. Uh, um, that Yes, of course, I've used them. Um, as a matter of fact, you do use uh, quite commonly 100 times oil immersion phase contrast objectives is because you want to observe bacteria. So that, that's the, the classic use. High magnification needed for phase contrast. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there is some communication going on. Okay, uh, I think this is Italian. Um, so unfortunately, my Italian is practically non-existent. I suppose it's Italian. Uh, something about ultraviolet light. <laughs> okay, okay. I imagine you can't watch directly into the eyepiece. I suppose uh, um, concerning ultraviolet, I, I have to guess now what the, the question is about. Maybe if you want to use ultraviolet light um, for uh, for microscopy, what you generally do is the following. For example, for, for fluorescent microscopy, uh, generally what you do is, um, I don't have this set up. You have an ultraviolet lamp and then um, the ultraviolet light will actually go um, through the objective, the special objectives, down on the specimen and then um, basically uh, the parts will start to glow in ultraviolet light and that is what you can see, right? So for ultraviolet light very often um, what you do is, is you kind of um, illuminate the specimen from the top yeah, um, as well. Will you do a live broadcast to show us samples under ultraviolet light, maybe with a mirror uh, as a light source? Um, uh, let's put it this way, I tried to do that um, but um, I will quickly tell you how, how it can be done but I was not successful enough um, because the, the fluorescent was too low. Um, generally, what you can do is, is you can take a blue light, blue LED, and you can illuminate some of the specimens, especially algae. You put the algae into darkness for about half an hour, you take it out and you shine some ultraviolet light on it, and then the chloroplast will start to grow red. So you shine blue light on it and it starts to glow red. This is called autofluorescence. Um, I tried that. And it kind of does work, but the problem is it was so weak that um, I was not able I was not able to capture it uh, sufficiently for live stream. Yeah? So you need a long exposure time and then you can actually see that the, some chloroplasts actually sh start to shine red. And I used a, a, um, a, a blue light uh, on this. So it's theoretically possible. Um, uh, it's theoretically possible, but, uh, but uh, practically not, uh, um, at least from, I currently have not figured it out practically to get a good, a strong effect. Okay, um, so um, so this is kind of the thing. So uh, UV light is still something that's kind of interesting. So, but uh, let's uh, let's move on and again a little bit. Okay, uh, because I do want. To, let me look at the time. I've been okay. Let me do the following. Um, I would like to show you now the slides that are prepared. Um, no, let's do a different thing. Um, I just want to show you some water samples. And uh, with the intention of showing you that water samples with algae and so on are probably not the best specimens for phase contrast. Okay, so this is going to be a, a somewhat a little bit of a of a negative example. Okay, 
Uh, is tube length critical on my old Japanese microscope as an adjustable tube length? Okay, yes, it is critical. Um, just very quickly to answer this, your question. I think old Japanese microscopes had a tube length of 170 or something. This here, the 160 over here, is the tube length, right? Um, and um, so if you use a 160 microscope uh, objective, then from the place where it's here, it's here all the way to the uh, place where the um, eyepiece is, should be 160 millimeters. Um, and uh, I know that uh, there are, 160 is the most common common one, but I know that there are some uh, some uh, microscope objectives, especially some old Japanese manufacturers, I think they had 170 millimeters. So let me quickly grab a water sample from somewhere. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you, a few days ago, about four or five days ago, I tried to make an enrichment culture by dropping in here a little wheat grain. You crush a wheat grain and then you, I'm looking for my tweezers, and then you drop it in there and then usually you have some paramecia growing and some other ciliates, and they didn't. And then I actually found, saw some water fleas, water crustaceans, tiny ones floating around in here as well. And I was, I realized, oh my gosh, maybe they've eaten my little paramecia. So, but I'm going to do the following. In any case, ah, you didn't see this. This is the wheat grain that I dropped in here. It's already very soft, and I'm just going to show you, you just dip it in here. There will be lots of starch grains here as well. I will um, take also some, some green algae as well over here. See, it it's kind of gets stuck. And I want to simply show you that, again, this is not, yeah, I'm going to use a second one, maybe not the best, um, specimen for phase contrast. Bacteria that might be in there, which certainly will be in there, can be seen quite well. But, um, yeah, because the natural colors are kind of destroyed by the phase contrast effect for this reason, um, yeah, water samples might or generally look disappointing. But I just want to dem demonstrate this for you. So let's go back again over here into yeah, I think I'm just going to start again at low magnification using a regular bright field. Uh, the color glass shifted. So this is regular bright field. Let's adjust everything again. Okay, we see a whole bunch of algae, uh, a little bit of a little bit of life here. So you have to flip out my condenser and this here to get a full view. The dots that you see in the background are probably are the starch grains of, of the wheat grain, but honestly, yeah. But we want to go up anyway with the magnification. Still bright field. I mean, lots of decomposition going on. Again, the starch grains, a little bit of movement maybe every now and then. Not so interesting, yeah. Again, I think because some of the water crustaceans in there, the water, water fleas might have <laughs> eaten them. So normally after a couple of days, you see a lot of cilias. Here's one of them, but you see, it's actually should be full of them, right? Yeah. But unfortunately not a lot, but that's, that's okay. Because the point is, is to, I want to demonstrate. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. How this actually looks like. So again, 40 times bright field. So just for the fun of it, before I show you phase contrast, this is how it looks like in DIC again. We have again slightly more colors. Yeah. But then again, the DIC also kind of uh, destroys the natural colors a little bit. Yeah. So, but how does this whole thing now look uh, like in phase contrast? Okay, so let's go over again to the phase contrast. It's uh, yeah, bright field as before. And now I have to change the condenser. So that's bright field as before. And this is now phase contrast. Okay. Yeah. So you see, hmm. Yeah. Not super exciting. Yeah. And the reason is, is that, uh, that phase contrast really works best. Um, for very thin specimens, but what what but what we are able to see indeed in the background, even though it's kind of thick, 
um, is, uh, I don't know if you're also able to see this on YouTube, yeah, but there are these tiny dots of bacteria in the background. Yeah, over here a little bit. Yeah. So when I basically first uh, observed water samples in phase contrast, it was kind of rather a little bit disappointing, right? Yeah. Also because uh, you have to completely open the condenser, you also have very little control over the depth of field because phase contrast, you don't really have a lot of, you don't have condenser control. If you kind of close the condenser like I'm doing right now, all of a sudden everything's gone. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not able to use the condenser aperture diaphragm either. Yeah, but occasionally, yeah, like like for example, here again, yeah, you see bacteria. Those rod shaped bacteria that you see over here, yeah, are quite easily visible now here in phase contrast, fairly easily visible. But as soon as I switch over to bright field, yeah, they are almost impossible to see. Uh, even, let's close the condenser again. Uh, a little bit here. Yeah. But in phase contrast again. Uh, it's uh, they're much more visible. Yeah. Sometimes in bright field, what do you actually see? If you see bacteria, then sometimes you just see a diffraction pattern and not so much uh, the cell itself. So let's go through here. Again, some of the questions. Um, have you been trying to join our for your form, have been trying to join your form and newsletter not successful? Um, just um, uh, the newsletter should be successful. I have to admit I did not send around a lot of newsletters up to this point, um, just uh, occasionally. Uh, but the forum, uh, it's like this. I do get a lot of form registration requests, but there is one problem. I'm getting a lot of um, fake registrations as well lots of spam registrations and for this reason um, there are two security mechanisms one is you have to answer some basic questions about microscopy um, some microscope part questions and then you also have to include a justification um, so why do you want to join the forum and this kind of helps me a little bit to judge whether you're a real human being um, so if you tell me why you want to join the forum, what microscope you have um, and so on then I kind of trust that you're a human being and I will basically um, yeah try to activate your account but even that didn't work recently because with AI um, essentially a lot of these uh, justifications were basically written by AI so I couldn't distinguish anymore so I request that if you want to um, get access to the form please do sign up uh, but also send me an email okay and then um, make it plausible that you are a real human because you won't believe it how many actually fake registrations I'm getting right and then I have to check the email address is does the email address look plausible um, or is it some kind of just a wild letter number combination and if it is then maybe you're not a real person so the, with the forum I, indeed I have had some issues uh, sorry about this but um, I don't know how to deal with that yeah um, would it be a good idea to have some of your audience to have co live stream which allows them to share experimental results? Of course, they have to be interested in. Yes, thank you for the suggestion. It is like this that um, if um, yeah, um, if let's put it this way, if you want to, if you don't want to do your own live stream, sharing your own experiences, what you can do is you can send me videos or or pictures, and then I can include them in this live stream as well. Okay, so that's that's option number one. Um, yeah, or otherwise, if you want to start your own live stream and if you want to advertise it or so, I have no, no problems, right? Um, so this is, yeah. Uh, but I've done so also in the past that people have actually sent me, thank you, by the way, uh, pictures and, and, and short videos, yeah. Um, I would like to join the form and we'll send you an email. Yes, uh, you can send it to editor at microbehunter.com. Please indicate your email address that you registered or your username. And then uh, as soon as I read it, I'll basically um, unlock it for you, okay? Um, I know nothing about microscopy, but these videos are interesting. <laughs> yes. Um, so basically, the, 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 I might fail the human test. No, you won't. <laughs> then just basically say that you know nothing about microscopy and you're, you've been watching my, my stream and the videos and whatever. And then I kind of believe that you're actually a real person. <laughs> but these days, with, honestly, with, uh, I, wouldn't believe, I couldn't, can't believe it. Ah, but that, that's dark field, by the way. I can't believe it that, that uh, 
yeah, AI is now so yeah also able to to answer some of these questions. Yes, so this here is now using the four times objective using the um, the dark field uh, filter. Okay, um, and that gives you a uh, yeah um, a dark field, not dark field filter, a, a, a the phase contrast filter, and that gives you a dark field effect. But look what happens if I go up with the magnification. I'm losing the dark field effect. So it actually only works uh, with the low power. Yeah? It only works with the low power. So for this reason, if you want to do dark field, get yourself a separate dark field um, patch stop and don't work with the yeah, um, yeah, phase contrast one. Yeah? So this is kind of the so back here again. Yeah, that's again phase contrast. Look, look how the dark screens look like here. Yeah. And yeah. And uh, this again, bright field. And here I can work with the condenser again. Yeah. So uh, basically, the summary is, the summary is is um, depends a lot on the specimen. Okay. Um, as expected. Yeah. What in the world? Oh, I just realized I used accidentally used two cover glasses instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. So, um, what I'll do now is is um, let's have a quick look at some of the specimens that I prepared last week. Um, yeah. So, if you watched last week's live stream, I kind of tried to remount some of the specimens that uh, yeah I bought from a very um, cheap uh, um, yeah microscope uh, plastic microscope slides. Well, I have to admit, I was not really very happy the way that the, the specimens were sometimes prepared. Okay. Um, this is, a, what does it say, a dragonfly leg, and they just basically just cut off a piece and just mounted it, and that's why it looks kind of a little bit ugly. Yeah. But uh, the mounting medium that I used has the effect of clearing and making it more transparent. Right? Again, this is a bright field. Let me put the arrow away. And those six specimens are really not suitable uh, for phase contrast. I would like to illustrate this again. Okay, so we have to go, it's 40 times. So first of all, it's, it's yeah, very um, you know, large, the magnification, right? Yeah. So the depth, yeah, because of the thickness of the specimen, it's not possible to get everything into focus either. And in phase contrast, that's how it looks like in phase contrast. Yeah. It kind of looks more ugly, obviously, huh? yeah. because especially for thick specimens, what you want to do is, is you want to close the condenser to increase the depth of field. And um, yeah, if I do that uh, in phase contrast, I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing um, all of the light. Yeah. So you see, that's not suitable. So thin specimens, you got to have thin specimens. Yeah. Again, in comparison. Yeah, bright field. I close the condenser, therefore I increase the depth of field again significantly. Yeah. And this is how it looks like. Huh? So um, yeah, again, this is kind of the yeah the overview of this uh, dragonfly leg. Next one, butterfly wing. Yeah, I did find something here that I would like to show you. Wing of a butterfly. Um, yeah, we've got, uh, of course, the scales here, lots of scales, and uh, looks very dark, um, so not very transparent, but um, let's do the following 40 times again, and we open everything again, this is again in bright field, okay, so this, these are the butterfly scales, some of you might have already found them in dust or water samples, I've been wondering what could this be. Uh, these are the scales of, of insects, butterflies, moths. So, and again, from bright field to phase contrast, this is how it looks here. Okay. Not so super, um, yeah, exciting. Huh? Some parts might be a little bit better visible, but again, not a... Um, uh, this is a typical, as I said before, typical amplitude specimen and not a phase specimen because uh, these butterfly scales have uh, their own um, uh, pigment and color yeah? and therefore differences in 
uh, phase shift are not quite as visible. So again, a few questions or maybe not. Um, can we use phase contrast for dark field? Mm -hmm. um, well, you can use, well, careful, um, uh, depends how you see that. You can use the phase contrast condenser. Some of those filters will work also as dark field filters as I just illustrated, yeah? But not ideally, it's better to get a separate dark field filter, a dark field patch stop, yeah? Um, a comment here, the biggest downside of phase contrast is that a lot of the slide will be, uh, uh, a lot of the debris not visible in bright field could be seen in phase contrast. Yes, it's very sensitive. Um, and by the way, dark field as well. If you use dark field and it's some kind of dust, which is, I don't know, completely somewhere else in the system, all of a sudden starts to shine up. Right? So in that sense, um, um, because it's so sensitive and it, because it makes uh, very fine structures visible, it has the trade-off that sometimes dirt, dust, debris, all, which you don't need, is also, also becomes visible. And, and even worse for dark field, I think. Yeah? Because dark field really has an even higher contrast. It's, the specimen looks very bright on a completely black, black background. If there's just some kind of dust somewhere in the system, it's immediately going to light up and you're able to see that. Huh? So this is the... Butterfly wing, okay, and what time is it? Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to quickly uh, move on here and drag on the locust leg, yeah, also from last week. Where is it? It's too, you see, you see that they kind of cut out uh, from the exoskeleton, they cut out a little piece of the leg of a locust. This is how it looks like in, in bright field of four times uh, bright field. Bright field in, in 40 times. Okay. Let's see how this looks like now in phase contrast. Yeah. And bright field, phase contrast, not a huge difference. So, yeah, again, a specimen which is uh, too thick. Next one, so um, as you've seen, um, yeah, you gotta be very selective with house fly leg, bee leg, locust wing. I don't know about the wing, maybe. Let's see how the wing works. I have to find it again first. Um, oh. so, you see, I'm, because I'm not able to look through the, here it is, I'm not able to look through the microscope at the same time. Again, they, they kind of just uh, cut off a little square piece of the wing and, um, yeah. So this here, um, this is now, let me find it again, open it again here a little bit to make it brighter. Focus. Okay, are ah, there little those little tiny spikes on the wing? Little tiny here. Okay, and phase contrast. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> again, not so much of a difference. Yeah. So again, the idea why I'm kind of showing this to you is is that um, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, some uh, some specimens are phase specimens, other specimens are amplitude specimens. Huh? Yeah. So here, these are it's phase contrast in, and now back again. Yeah, in bright field, and because it's so fun, let's have a look at the whole thing also in DIC. And this is how it looks like in DIC. And again, adjust everything a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of the, the thing where generally what I do is, is uh, um, I, I try out, I go through all of the techniques and then basically pick the one that kind of looks nicest. Yeah. So this is a little bit the, the, the pra for all practical. Yeah. Um, can you show us how to align phase ring in an objective with filter in the condenser? Uh, yes, uh, please uh, do check in a f short time. Um, maybe in a day or so, um, I'm uh, making a video on my other channel, okay, Microbe Hunter Microscopy, um, which is the more technical channel. 
And um, I'm actually, uh, I'll be explaining um, how to do the alignment. And actually, I'll, I made actually also a video uh, through the, uh, the the face telescope to actually see how the two rings are kind of uh, moving around for overlapping. Okay, so I will actually show how this uh, works. And uh, yeah, but not in this year because I cannot uh, kind of put the camera in, in front of this here, right? Um, it's a, a separate microscope that I use. That's that's the only reason here. Yeah. So yes. So if you want to see how this actually works, I will, I will do that. What time is it now? It's one hour nineteen. I think I'm slowly, um, I'm slowly going to to call it quits again. Uh, do you analyze your blood yourself when you get sick? Um, short answer no it's an um i often get questions can you put your blood under the microscope before or after vaccination or before or after you're sick and the answer is, is you will not see a difference okay because uh, when you, if you're ill or not ill this does not reflect or cannot be seen in the shape of the red blood cells um so because it is uh, on the on a different level yeah it's antibodies and you cannot see them on under the microscope yeah um if there's a chance for you to upgrade for your setup, what would you like to upgrade? Just curious. Um, yes, um, for my setup up here, what I would like to upgrade, but honestly, this is uh, something that I'm considering, but it's a little bit expensive. Um, you see, you've noticed that every time when I wanted to operate the microscope, I had to kind of reach over and 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 kind of uh, turn. Um, there is uh, they actually the company does offer some an, an, an electrical drive for so that I'm able to move everything around uh, using a joystick. Okay, um, so this would also give me more smoother movement. Um, it's not something that that other people would need really, but it would add a convenience for me because right now you don't see the I'm kind of stretching out my arm to reach over to the microscope, right? Um, and uh, having something a little bit close by and having some kind of controls um, to focus and to move around uh, would be a quite of a big increase in convenience. Uh, so that would be actually something that uh, I, I would like to. I'm thinking about upgrading. Yeah. Um, don't you have a more powerful objective to show the bacteria better? Well, I do have a 60 times, uh, not a more powerful objective for um, uh, for uh, phase contrast, but for um, DIC. Uh, let me check. Okay. So here we are again. That's DIC. Uh, this is now the 40 times. Let's go up to 60 times. Let's go so this is not phase contrast. This is DIC. You see a moving diatom and you see a whole bunch of bacteria. Okay, because you were asking. So I just explained this to you. Uh, those, uh, these are the starch grains from the wheat grain that I added. That's a diat looks like a diatom over here. And those little long structures that you see here. Yeah, these are bacteria. And those bacteria... They um, they're difficult for you to see now, but they look almost like they have a bright side and a dark side. It's almost like they have a, a, a three-dimensional shape. That's because of the DIC. Yeah. So that is uh, the yeah the the thing here. If um, yeah, I'm just going to switch uh, over to. I've got a, a hundred times uh, oil immersion objective, and in phase contrast. Ah, that's much better. Let me put it out here. Here we go. This is now how it would how it looks like in phase contrast. And here the bacteria now really nicely visible um, as those dark little lines. Huh? So again, I know I'm repeating myself. Thin objects, transparent objects like bacteria are really ideal for this. Yeah. So people, um, let me quickly yeah that would be handy for your live stream with a joystick thanks for sharing yes uh, um, i was actually some years ago i was actually thinking about making something like this myself using some kind of stepper mo stepper motors maybe but connecting it to the microscope is a little difficult here uh, and uh, yeah is 100 times is only for oil yes yes 100 times uh, objectives are i think almost in all cases for oil you know, these are all oil immersion objectives, so I'd have to add um, a little bit of an immersion oil, and I'd have to clean it. So I don't, I don't really like to use uh, the hundred times objective very much. 
Um, is it recommended to use a green filter for phase contrast? Generally, yes, uh, because uh, the phase contrast optics in many cases have been designed for green light. I don't have a green filter. Um, it still works, but um, what I read somewhere is that uh, the green filter is kind of uh, gives you that then still a better, the best resolution because the optics were somehow calculated for green light. Yeah. So um, yeah, what I can do is, is of course look at this. This is uh, just face contrast. I could theoretically also add this here is now um, and it's kind of too dark now using also the DIC prism at the same time. So this is kind of a, a weird combination of, of DIC and face contrast. Okay, but you see it takes away so much light that you can forget about it. People, um, almost one and a half hours again. Um, I'm going to call it quits again for today. Hope that uh, you still kind of like the, the live stream. I'm always happy for recommendations um, and for suggestions. Um, I'll see if I can, um, yeah, I don't know yet exactly what I'm going to do by next week, but I was actually thinking about, because people requested it, to do a little bit of Reinberg and oblique illumination, but I have to make a few filters first, okay? Um, so, yeah, so this is kind of the, the thing. Um, can you use a green LED um, instead of a green filter? Um, I, I see no reason why not. Uh, most microscope manufacturers uh, just use white light and then you work with uh, filters of different colors because if you just use green LEDs, then you kind of limit it to that color only. Yeah. So uh, the 100 times dry is available, but the limit is a numerical aperture, yes. So, and you see, if there is a limit in a numerical aperture, then I think uh, like 0 0.95, then there is not a big point concerning the resolution. Then you might just as well also um, yeah, work with a lower resolution, right? Okay, I wish you all the best. Uh, Twitter, do you use it? I used to use it, but not anymore. I cannot... Um, have too many different platforms. It's too difficult for me to maintain all of the platforms. So, but I'm really going to call it quits now. Hope that you liked it. Uh, please feel free to comment, uh, of course, uh, in the comment section below. Um, see you again next week, um, maybe on Saturday. Please, normally it's on Saturday. Um, if not, then I'll make an announcement that it's going to be again on Sunday. All the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time and bye-bye.